So as mentioned in the last session, I want to talk a little bit more about metal versus non-metal materials. So there's basically a difference on how light is reflected based on whether we have a material which is made out of metal or which is made of a material which is not metal. It's actually that simple. We basically just have those two kind of materials in our world, metal materials or non-metal materials. Of course, there are more materials than this in this world, but we can categorize it in this kind of way. And all non-metal materials are called dielectric materials and materials which are made of metal are called also conductive materials. So it's basically if they can conduct electricity, they're conductive. If they cannot, they are dielectric. And um, yeah, that's, that's basically it. So if you have glass, if you have plastic, paper, wood, ceramics, these are all materials which cannot conduct electrici electricity and thus are non-metal materials. And all other materials like gold, um, aluminium, copper, etc. They are materials which can uh, conduct electricity and therefore are called metal materials or defined as metal materials. And the difference between those two is that they have a different behavior on how they reflect light. And we can actually measure the amount of light they reflect. And this is called the index of refraction. And we can measure this kind of reflection. So let's say, for example, we have a light ray which comes in at 45 degrees. A little bit of those light rays will be bounced off of our surface and will be reflected. And a small amount of this, this light will be absorbed by our material and will be refracted into the inside of our material. And we can define the, this amount of refraction by a percentage or also by a value. So for example, let's say that in this kind of scenario with this kind of material, we have about a 20% reflectance value or also 0 0.2 or the, the, the index would be 0 0.2. Now, for example, um, in another given angle, we have, for example, a lot of um, reflection in our material. So a lot of light will be reflected. And this we can define by a value, which is, for example, 0 0.85. And if we now use this kind of measurements and measure different materials and categorize them as dielectric materials and conductive materials, we can plot this kind of um, angle of incidence we saw over here. So this kind of angle, we shoot our light rays onto our surface area. We can kind of change this from 0%, which would be super flat up to 90%, which would be perpendicular to our surface area. And then we can measure the amount of light which is reflected and uh, refracted and plot that on our chart and we call this then the, the amount of reflectance and give this kind of value on the y-axis and the angle of the incident of the light is plotted on the x-axis. And as you can see now for example with dielectric material materials you can see that when we increase the angle of incidence you can see that for a long time, depend, independent of the angle of the light, there is no reflection going on at all. So no light is reflected and a lot of light is absorbed. Only if we have a very steep angle going on, you can see that the amount of reflectance suddenly goes up by a lot. And if we have an angle where the angle of incidence is 90 degree um, to the normal of our surface, we have actually 100% reflection. So let's go back to this illustration. So what we mean with the angle of incidence is again this kind of angle. And if we 
shoot a light ray right from the top perpendicular to our surface, then this would mean at an angle of 0%. And if we would have what go down to 80% or 90%, that would actually be the angle of incidence of about 80%. So the steeper or basically the flatter the angle of our light ray of our incoming light ray is, um, the higher the angle of incidence. So again, as you can see, for a long amount of time, basically no, no light is reflected or only a very tiny amount of light is reflected from our surface. And then only at the end at steep angles, light gets reflected. And this is for dielectric materials. And now as you can see on the right side, conductive materials behave quite a bit different. We have, independent of the angle, always a lot of reflectance going on. There's a interesting little drop over here, but that's not too important if we have a very like steep angle um, to our surface. So the amount of reflection actually goes down a little bit and then it goes shoots up again a little bit. So for conductive materials, we always have a lot of reflectance going on. And this is probably because metal materials are much harder and denser on an atomic level and thus they reflect or bounce off much more light than a dielectric material would do. And let's have a look at the dielectric material here in a small animation. As you can see um, on the edge of our sphere you get a lot of reflection and in the inside or the on the surface here on the middle we have no reflection at all and this is exactly this kind of effect where we have a dielectric material where we have on the um, if we look straight to the object we have no reflection at all and then only on the borders of the object where the angle gets steeper and more like flatter where we have like look directly on the corner or edge of this kind of object we kind of see a reflection and now if we would increase the amount of this index of refraction value we would see that the reflection is now also visible on the center of this kind of object. And let me pause this here at the end. So now you, this object appears almost metallic. And in this case, the object appears not metallic, but rather like a dielectric material. And this kind of effect where the amount of light, which is reflected depending on the angle, we call the Fresnel effect. And back in the days, you actually have to set that up in your materials to work. And if you wouldn't set it up, you wouldn't have this kind of effect. Nowadays, the good thing is you don't have to care about this and it will be set up for you automatically. But what the Fresnel effect basically does is, um, again, just another representation for the same thing, but the uh, flatter your angle is to the surface or the steeper the angle of incidence, the more reflection you see from an object. You can actually observe this kind of thing um, if you stand in front of a, of a sea or lake and then if you look straight down you would see to the ground of the lake but if you would look further to the horizon you would see more reflections of the environment. And this kind of effect is called Fresnel because there was a guy who kind of uh, a physicist who did different experiments and came up with the theory for this kind of thing. And basically it's easy to, to explain or to get a mental model of this. You can just imagine a stone you would throw over a, a lake again. And if you would drop the stone right from the, uh, from the top and would just drop it into the water, it would just fall down and almost you would the, the stone wouldn't reflect at all basically and would just drop to the floor of the lake but if you change the angle and make it like flatter to the surface of the water more or the, the stone will be reflected more and more and the steeper i always say steeper but i mean like the, the flatter the angle gets to the surface the more the stone will be reflected and it's the same thing for light uh, on your materials. So if light hits your surface perpendicular, a lot of light will be absorbed, only a small amount will be reflected. And if you 
um, move this kind of hitting angle closer to the surface angle, then more light will be reflected. Now, a lot of theory, I know, but um, it's important to kind of know why we have this kind of difference. And now let's go back into Cinema 4D and let's have a look at two different kind of materials. So I now have another sphere over here. and I will apply a new material on our first sphere. Let's change the camera a little bit here. And now I see you, or as we open up one of the materials, let's go with the dielectric materials first and let's call it like this. So this would be dielectric. And this is now put to the mode non-metal. I can also get rid of the clear coat maybe, for example, go back to the base layer and make this a little bit more rough. So this is now a material, it could be a plastic, for example. And as you can see, we have next to this a material which appears to be like gold. And let me open this up. So this would be a conductive material. And let's go to the general tab over here and you can see now it's put to the mode metal. And by this, Corona knows that it should render this kind of material as a metallic material. And we have a bit of different settings over here for a metal material. We cannot change this index of refraction value anymore, um, but we have instead something like the edge color. But you can, in most cases, leave this just to one. And by this color, we can define how the kind of object should reflect certain amounts of light. But as you can see, it's a very subtle effect. If I make this white, you see we can get a little bit more of a white effect down here. If I make it red, you can see right on the edges, we get a little bit more of a color tint. But still again, as with the default non-metallic version, the main color of this material will be defined by this color setting over here. Okay, let, let's get this back to where it was. Um, so we have this kind of, uh, have gone back too far. We have this conductive material and we have this dielectric material. One thing to notice about the difference of those kind of materials, if I make this glossy again, if you have a closer look on the material, you can see that the light which is reflected is actually the real colors of the environment. So it's not tinted, it's not yellowish. It appears a little bit like this, but it's actually not. It's like full spectrum reflected. All colors are reflected by this kind of dielectric material. And that's always the case for dielectric materials. All colors will be re reflected. In comparison to that, we have this gold metal material and metal materials are actually able to tint the color of the reflection. And this will, as you can see, tint our reflection a, bit, a little bit yellowish. Let me try to increase the IOR value over here. So it's a little bit uh, different with how the values of the I, IOR index of refraction uh, are used in Corona. Um, but basically what you can define with this is the amount of or the intensity of the reflection. And as you can see now, if I turn this to the maximum value, we get a more intense reflection on our material and it almost appears a little bit metallic now. So I would keep it always at 1.5 if you don't want to do kind of a mixed uh, material. But as you can see now more clearly is that the blue, uh, the sky is blue, the trees are green, the street is gray. And if you compare that to the conductive material, you can see that everything is tinted um, by the golden metal material. Okay, so that's the main difference for materials. You have to pick if it's a non-metal material or if it's, it's a metal material. Um, and last but not least, just one thing, of course, in the metal material, you can also change the amount of roughness to make it appear different. And again, we can also now apply a clear coat layer to this. Um, and interesting would be now if this clear coat layer actually behaves as non-conductive. And I think it's the way 
So if we add a clear coat layer over here, it will reflect the light not tinted anymore because this is not like a metal kind of effect, but it's a layer we put on top of the metal and it's usually some kind of paint, so it's not conductive. Let me increase the diffusion here a little bit more and increase the amount of reflection from our clear coat. And as you can see, we don't have this kind of tint anymore in this kind of material. So yeah, that's it about metal and non-metal materials. And then in the next session, we talk about refractive 